I want to uh, preach a message this morning um, entitled, It's Time to Be Reasonable. It's time to be reasonable. And that's also my first point. Um, that's, I'm not really that creative. So, uh, you got to get... So, you know, we all, we all come to the Lord in, from different walks of life, right? We all, uh, I've often said, you know, if it wasn't for the Lord, uh, hardly any of us would be gathered together. Hardly any of us would even know each other. You know what I'm saying? We, we just, um, we're, not, we're not all here because we have similar interests. I mean, most of y'all are not even Dallas Cowboys fans. You know what I mean? And so... We, we, we wouldn't watch the game together. You know, we, we, wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't go fishing together because I'm not really that good at fishing. You know, some of you go, well, I'd help you. You wouldn't want to help me. You know, because uh, I used to get bored with it. You know, you get out there and, you, and you're just, and I'm like, and I'm just one of these, I want to do something, so I'd play with it. You know, and I'm casting it, and, you know, and you don't really catch fish. Now, I've got, as I've gotten older, I'm like, let's put a bobber on that. Let's just sit there. You know what I mean? And so, but I'm just, my point is this morning is there's things that we wouldn't, um, if it wasn't for Christ, we wouldn't have anything in common. A lot of us, you know, and, and we, wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't gather together. But, but listen, so we come from different walks of life, from different places, uh, different backgrounds. Um, man, I, I tell you, as a, uh, in the ministry, and I, I've been... So folks, and I, I would come in, and, and they'd sit down there um, and talk to me, and I'd say, hey, tell me about, you know, what's going on. I mean, some people, they, they, you hear their story, and you're like, man, I'm going to keep a, I'm going to keep somebody to trail you, because this is a little scary. You know what I mean? And I, I was in a church, and a guy one time, he said, yeah, you know, I, I've, I've done this kind of, this heinous crime. He said, but I served my time, and I'm good now. I'm thinking, and I said, does the pastor know? I was, I was you know, I said, does the pastor know that? He said, no, I haven't told him yet. I said, well, I'll tell him. <laughs> you know, now the but, but, you know, you know, great guy, great guy, but I'm just saying if I seen him in the street and he said that, I, I, I would look for the other side of the street. You know, there's people that come from different places. We all come from a different walk of life. And, and, and some, come, some people will get in a place and they'll talk to you about things that you have no idea what they're talking about, like their job. Uh, I, you know, I was in the Air Force and there was a guy that he would talk to me about airplanes because I was in the Air Force, I know about airplanes. I provided broken parts, and I fixed, you know, I had, you know, I was a supply guy. I don't know about airplanes, you know, and he would talk about it, and I'm like, after about 15 minutes, I'm like, I didn't say it, but I'm thinking, I've got no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> People start talking about technical things at times, and you're like, yeah, I know that word, that one, you know what I mean? And so some, we don't, you know, sometimes there's this thing. So we come from different places. Some are professionals. Some will walk in here, they're professionals having, some will have advanced degrees, uh, they've studied, uh, maybe some experienced managers in other areas of life that you've been in, and, and really is those. Others are going to come here as, as, um, as laborers, practical, uh, boots on the ground, closer to the work type of thing, different, different walks of life. You know, some, some come here having had great success in life. Others come in here with a multitude of failures, one failure after another. Some people, some people drag into church on their, their very last leg just trying to, trying to figure out the last thing. Others are at the time, when I came to Christ, I was at the best place I'd ever been in my life, right? And it was a, the best place I got out of the gutter to get to the place that I could hear the Lord. Others, they get to the bottom of the barrel, then that's when they listen to the Lord. We're, we're, what I'm just trying to say is we all come from different places, the apostles came, you know, one was a tax collector, <laughs> right? Worked for the IRS. I mean, yeah, they thought about them the way we think about them today, right? Others were fishermen. Fishermen, it's just, you know, uh, listen, their, their position in culture had no bearing on their position in Christ. You hear what I'm saying to you? Listen, how, how, they, um, um, how they were in the culture and, and, and their standing had no bearing on their, on their position in Christ. They came from different places, but all arrived at the same conclusion. Isn't it interesting? Some of the, some of the pinnacles of the faith or the, the pillars of the faith were, were guys that, that uh, would be out there on a boat casting a net trying to catch some fish. Um, it wasn't based on their what they've accomplished out there in the world to see what we've gotten. 
But they'd all come to the same conclusion. And that was that the Jesus Christ, the Jesus is the Christ. That he was the Messiah. And they looked and many others. And the one would come to know, come on, you got to come see, I found him. It's him. It's him. And they said, I don't know, is that him? They said, and then they said, it is him, right? Let's go tell somebody else. It's him. And so they, they began and found this place, this thing to see that what they, what they realized and really what brings us together this morning is that we've, we've seen Jesus, right, not face to face, but we've seen him through the word of God. We've seen him spiritually. We said, he is the Christ. And we've come and we've, we've gathered together now on, on that basis. You know, one thing that people, all people have, no matter where we come from, is we all have reason or reasoning ability. Sometimes referred to as logic. Think about this thing. He's like, now I know some folks, they ain't got no logic. They're illogical. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying God, God has created us with that. It, it's what divides us from the animal kingdom. Um, the ability to communicate and to reason and the Bible tells us, let us reason together, saith the Lord. You know, there's different ideas. And the ability to rationalize. And so, therefore, we, we find here this attempt by the Apostle Paul to appeal to our, to our reason. To our reason. When we find this word, therefore, we need to go see what it's, what it's there for. Amen? So that takes number two. Uh, number two is the mystery of grace. Look back at Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, um, verse 25. We could go back even further because chapter 12 kind of gets to this place. It kind of summarizes uh, the whole rest of the, the beginning of, of Romans. But we're going to just, we're just going to, instead of going over the last, you know, you know 11 chapters, we're just going to look at a piece of this here and kind of grab the end of it. Verse 25, he says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So, listen, there had been a, a huge shift in how God was dealing with man. This is what we're finding in this, in this it, it, what Paul is dealing with the, here in Romans. There's, there's this huge shift on how God was dealing with man. So God had, had since the days of, of Abraham, primarily worked on earth through the nation of Israel. That was God's plan. He was going he, he to take this people, a, a chosen out people, started with the man, just a man, right? And, and, and from him, God said, I'm going to bless you and all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. Right? Through one guy. Right? He said, your, your, your seed is going to be like the sands of this, the stars in the sky. Can you imagine? It's like, just, just me, huh? You know I'm an old man, right? So yeah, God, God wants to do something that man can't do without Him. You see what I'm saying? God wants to say, you know, when we think about that, uh, you know, a, uh, Sarai laughed when, when the angel said she was going to have a child. It's funny, really? I'm an old woman. How is this going to happen? I mean, ladies, you know, those that are around 80, would you imagine God says, you're going to have a child? You'd be like, you kidding me? First of all, uh uh, right? And, uh, you know, you this kind of situation's going on, and God wants to do something with you that you cannot do without Him. He wants it to be so amazing that you say, that was God. There's nobody else can get credit but Him. And that's how God works in our life. But this, this is what God was doing with the nation of Israel. He started with, with Abraham and, and primarily worked through the nation of Israel. He wanted them to be a city set on a hill, to be a light to the world, that the whole world can see what a nation whose God is the Lord would look like. And they would come to Him. And they did throughout, throughout history. They came to them and, and seen. And, and, um, but we know how through the Old Testament, of the nation of Israel, they failed constantly. And they would repent, and then God would bring them back, and then they would turn from God, and God would bring judgment. And Just a, just a story of the failure of man is really, uh, the, not just the failure of Israel, but the failure of man de de depicted through the nation of Israel. But now the shift had come. 
there was a shift. Now there was, it was going from the, 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 the time of the law to the, to the time of grace. And there's this shift. It's a huge shift. It's very, very big. And, 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 and as the, this, this, this letter to the Romans, is, it, it God wanted to get to this thing, is I don't want you to be left in ignorance. I don't want you to be... Ignorance doesn't mean you're stupid. Ignorance means you don't know. Right? Ignor- well, a lot of us are ignorant in a lot of things. You know, and, and the only way to get, to get over ignorance is for somebody to tell us, teach us, show us in the Word of God. The, the Ethiopian eunuch came and, and Philip came alongside him and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? He said, How can I accept some man to guide me? And so God has a plan, and this is, this is God's plan. So God, listen, God isn't hiding His will and His way from us. God's not trying to make it some tricky thing like we gotta, we got to solve some riddle or some puzzle to figure out what He wants to do with us. He wants us to know and understand. Look at verse 26 now. Romans eleven twenty six, 26. And He said, And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is My covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. So the deliverer that was to come, that he promised, he's talking about here, was Jesus Christ. He is the, the, he, he is the capital D deliverer, right? He is the deliverer. He was the fulfillment. Hey, listen, Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of the covenant with Israel. God said, one day I'm going to take away your sins. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to, I'm going to save you. I'm going to take away your sins. Not just push them back. Listen, listen the, 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 the Jews through many years would, would offer sacrifices that would cover their sin. Right? It would, it would cover it. It would, it, would, it would cover it. So in this sense, like we've seen um, in the Passover, so that God would pass over them when they're covered with the blood because God then wouldn't see uh, their sin. He would see the, the blood of the sacrifice. He said, but one day, it's not going to be just a covering. It's going to be a forgiving. It's going to be a taking away of their sin what a wonderful day that we don't have to every day and every year year by year and every occasion have to shed more blood i mean we the old testament is gory it's gory the blood of animals it wasn't meant to be pretty why would god do all that listen because we are so stubborn stiff-necked people It, it needs to be so intense for man to realize our relationship with God and what we've done against the Holy God. And so there's blood and the screaming. And I mean, listen, when you cut the, the throat of it, I'm not trying to get too gory, but it is gory. When you cut the throat of an animal, it doesn't just <sighs> go into peace. No, it's a, it's a gory. You're grabbing this thing and it's bloody and this thing. You've raised this to be a spotless lamb and it comes. And what? Not a pretty picture at all. You said, one day there's going to come the Christ. He's going to forgive it. He's going to put away sin. That's going to be all over. Whew. What a day. What a day. Aren't you glad we live on this side of the law? Man. I mean, we're soft today. I mean, we bring, we bring animals in the house today. You know what I'm saying? Anyhow. Okay. But it's through forgiveness. Through forgiveness. Look at verse 28. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Listen, as it happens, they didn't receive that forgiveness. They didn't receive the promise that God provided. Um, you know, one of the saddest things, I think, in, in our world is when somebody has a great need, but they won't accept the solution. You know, I want to do it my way. I don't, I don't want the answer. I want, I want my answer to work. God, why can't you let my answer work? Because <laughs> it's wrong. Right? Maybe it's not wrong. It's just not what's best. God is, aren't you glad we got a God that knows what's best for us and, and wants to give that to us? Even through our stubbornness. Whew, I'm telling you, sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's painful. And so as God brought the, 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 the answer... He, he brought the uh, uh, he, he brought this 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 answer that for the promise of the, this covenant to fulfill it, and they they didn't receive it. Instead, they became enemies to the gospel message. 
They became enemies to the good news of the Savior Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, I want to say this to us this morning. Nevertheless, they are still God's chosen people. I don't find anywhere I don't find anywhere in the Bible that tells us that was going to cease. I don't find that anywhere. Uh, so so anybody that's well, you know, I think this. That, I just you know maybe we could find somebody could show me something that that contradicts everything else the Bible said. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? This is still God's chosen people. They're not. They're not. By the way, they're not chosen, and they were never chosen because of their merit. You know, Abram wasn't a great guy. He was, he was called out of the Ur of the Chaldees, right? He wasn't a great guy. He, wasn't, he didn't do anything great other than this, that he would listen to God. And it was accounted unto him righteousness that he followed God. When God said, go out to this place, where are we going? God said, just go. Said, All right. Wow. It was, that was what was counted unto him righteousness. When God said, go, do this thing, he just said, okay, God. And that's the kind of faith that God's looking for. Well, God, can you, point, can you just map out this whole... That's how I am. God, can you map out this whole thing for me and let me make a decision? Right? That's, that's, that's how the human heart is. We want to, but, but there's this thing of faith that Abram just said, God, just, um, I'm going to go do it. I don't know where I'm going, what's going on. And he goes into a place. Book of Hebrews tells us about this. Uh, so they weren't chosen because of their merit or their own goodness but by the grace of God. Therefore, their sin doesn't cause them to be unchosen by God. You see, see how that works? Listen, it wasn't, God didn't choose this nation that wasn't a nation, it was a man. God didn't choose them because of their merit, so He doesn't unchoose them because, because, of their, because of their sin. Look at verse 29, He said, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, He's talking about. Listen, when the Jews rejected the gospel... The Messiah, it was turned to the Gentiles. When, when, when the Jews rejected their Savior, the Savior turned to the Gentiles. The Gospel turned to the Gentiles. Uh, listen, the Gentiles, us, now live under this, this time of mercy. Look, look, at verse, uh, look at verse 30. Let me go back. Let me go to verse 29. Sorry. Verse 29. It says, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. I mentioned that. Listen. God still has a special relationship with Israel. I hope you all see that this morning. Um, you say, why is that important? Because God said it was. I don't... I don't uh, I don't want to put anything more on that. You know, you know so, so just a moment. Let me take a little parentheses in here. Because they're God's chosen people, that doesn't mean we approve of everything they do. Israel is, is, is really not a religious nation at all today. All right? Uh, they, uh, rarely do you find a, a, a Jew that follows the Word of God. You just, it's, it's, it's rare. Uh, that follows. So, so listen, they're, they're not, uh, because God, they're still God's special chosen people, doesn't mean that we, we support everything that they do. I'm, bef I'm behind anything that they do. No, I, I'm not behind everything they do, but I'm for them as a people. You see, I'm for them as a people. I'm, 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 I'm for them being, being preserved. I'm for us uh, protecting them. Right? I'm for us being on their side. I'm only, on, I'm, I'm only for us being on their side, not because they're good people. Or, or, not that I'm saying they're bad people, either. that's not the point. The point is because God said they're His people. And so that's enough, that's enough, that, that's, that's enough right there. So, so God still has a special relationship, and He will once again, He will once again make them the focus of His attention. He will, that's going to happen. He, the Bible tells us that, we go back to the book of Revelation, we're fine. He's going to once again make them the focus of His attention. The 144,000 witnesses are going to be Jewish men. Okay, it's, it's going to be something that's going to happen as he did before, as they were his focus before, but they rejected him. It's going to be again. And so there, we find this thing. And then we get to verse 30, I'd already mentioned, for, for as yet in times past have not believed God, we're talking about the Jews, I'm talking about, talking about the Gentiles, yet have now obtained mercy 
through their unbelief. So, so when the Jews rejected the gospel through their unbelief, it was turned to the Gentiles. So the Gentiles now live under this time of, of mercy. We live and, and, and should, should we say favor. So we live under this time of the favor of God upon the Gentiles because of the rejection of the Jews. So that's what he's saying here. Because the Jews rejected, the, the, the gospel was turned unto the Gentiles. Those that which did not believe now believe because of their unbelief. See, so it turned. And so, so what happens now, watch this. We now get to be the focus of God's attention. Amen? Isn't that good? I mean, like, I'm not glad that they didn't believe. I'm not glad for that. But I'm glad that God's focused on us now. And it's a wonderful place to be in. The focus of God's attention. By the way, when I'm saying us in this day, we call this the day of, of grace or we call it the, the church age. So what, the focus of God's attention, it, it's interesting when we think about this. In the Old Testament, it was uh, Israel, not because they were a great people, not because they did anything fantastic, not because of what they did, but it's because God said, I want to have a city set on a hill. I want to have a city that will, that will show the world about Jehovah. The God of Israel, what, what a nation whose God is the Lord looks like, and, and so that they can be a light to the rest of the world. So now he says today, because they rejected and, they, and they've, they've, they've fallen and they, they were destroyed, now God's attention is on, on the Gentile and, and on the church. That once again, we might be a lighthouse. We might shine the light to the world. It's like God has the same plan. Can, can I just say this right here? God wants to use you. God wants to use you to make a difference in the lives of others. By the way, the difference He wants to use you to make is that others would get the gospel. God wants to use you to do that, but if you won't be used, He's going to use someone else. You mean God's going to pass over me? No, you're going to let, not let God use you. Isn't that something? God has the same plan. God wants to, God, don't, don't, get, don't miss the first part. God wants to use you. And he, and, he, and he wants to come and use your life to do that. But if you won't, um, he'll, he'll take it to someone else. Because his will, his will is going to get done. It's going to get done. It's a wonderful place to be, to be in the, the focus of God's attention. But that doesn't mean God is no longer interested in them, in, in the Jews. Look at verse 30. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, sorry verse 31. Um, well, let's go to 30 again. For as yet in times past... Um, for as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through the, their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. So listen, God has a written off Israel, neither should we. Amen? They are not the enemy, they are still God's elect people. Through the, the believing Gentiles in the world, the Jews, the Jew now has the opportunity to obtain mercy. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. He said, because they didn't, they didn't believe, you had the opportunity. Now they're not they're, they're unbelieving. Now, because of your belief, they have the opportunity to receive mercy. Isn't God's plan magnificent? Uh, it's just God God. God doesn't say, okay, you're done, I'm moving on from you, and I'm done. He said, no, now I'm going to move on to somebody that will. And so now it's back to them that now we can have the opportunity to reach them. My, my, my pastor, uh, Pastor David Leidick, who's my pastor the whole time I was a missionary, he, uh, I mean, he, he's, a, he's a fellow, he loves Israel and loves the, the if he sees a Jew somewhere, he finds out a guy has a little hat, he finds out a Jew, he's going to go up and, go up and shake, he said, thank you, thank you for, for being part of your family, for bringing the Savior into the world. He will, in public. I mean, like, like we would maybe a, a veteran or somebody, if he sees a Jew somewhere, he'll go up and shake and say, I appreciate, appreciate your family uh, bringing the Savior into the world. The guy's like, <laughs> but he just, he's, he's like that. He said, you know, what he wants to do is, is say, listen, God has used your people. 
at your heritage, and he'll go in and use that sometimes as an opportunity to share Christ with them. But I'm saying, what a what a what a wonderful thing that we see this thing that uh, that this is this is transferred to us now, um, and so it it becomes this uh, this 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 transfer of God's plan continues to go. So it's through the uh, verse 32, for God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that He might have mercy on all. So it's through the nation of Israel, that God said He would bless all nations, which He did through Jesus Christ. So so now it's through the Gentiles that the Jew might be saved. We have we've all received mercy one upon the other. It's really a wonderful thing. So the third thing, God's plan is beyond our reason. God's plan is beyond our reason. Look at verse 33. He says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been His counselor? Or or, or, or who hath first given to Him and and it shall be recompensed unto Him again? For of Him and through Him and to Him are all things to whom be glory forever Amen. Listen, folks, God has been devising a plan to show His mercy to the whole of mankind throughout the ages. At times, man will sit and make such gross accusations toward God, such as, how could God do this or that? Right? I just don't know how God could do this or that. Folks will make accusations, how could God allow this? How could God allow that to my family member? It's some of the things that some of the accusations that we throw up against God are are just they're just gross and vulgar. We're talking about the God of all creation devising a plan to show mercy to the whole of mankind. We'll sit over and say, "How could God do that thing in this little piece of it? Why doesn't God do this?" Now, I'm not saying we don't ask those questions. I'm not saying. I wonder why God does it. Listen, where were you when the worlds were formed? Were were you up there next to God, working on that with Him? (laughs) You know? Do you know the mind of God? Are you His counselor? Not a one of us had anything to give God that he might have a need to return that mercy or grace upon us. Not one of us blessed God in a way that God says, I'm going to recompense that to you. This is his plan. This is his world. It's his mercy. It's his grace. All that we are, all that we have, and all that we are come from him. Verse 36 said, it says, "For, for of him and through him and to him, are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Therefore. (laughs) Number four. Therefore. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So all that up to now was the introduction. That's what the therefore is there for. Our very basic reasoning to get us to the place that we we realize what is now our reasonable service. He said, listen, God has 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 had a plan to extend His mercy to you personally. Throughout the ages, I'm telling you, can, can you just imagine God in His mind had a string of, of thought from His mind to you as an individual from all of eternity. I don't even I can't even comprehend that. How is that possible? I don't know. God? Well, how does God do that? Listen, am I his counselor? <laughs> right? Do I know the mind of God? But I'm going to tell you this, the, the Bible teaches us and shows us that God is personally interested in each one of us. God is interested in your life. I'm telling you, he wants to do something with your life, and he wants to use, use your life, and he wants to reach your life. Whew. You know that same plan 
is still active to get that same mercy to someone else. That plan that God was so interested in your life as an individual is still at work to get it to the next person. Not, not like he's done with us and moved on. No, no, no. Matter of fact, he's going to use us. That's a good plan. I mean, not using us, but that he's continually getting the plan going. I mean, listen, it's, uh, uh, it, it's only reasonable now, folks. Here's what we're saying. It's only reasonable that we present ourselves to be used in this process. I mean, it's just reasonable that, listen, God is from the, from the foundation of the world had a line to reach you and get to your life, to get you maybe to this place today that you would trust Christ as your Savior. Maybe that God would get you to hear that you would you do something with, and it's only reasonable that when God reached me, that I would present myself to continue that thing. That's just reasonable. It's not ridiculous. It's not like God is asking us to do some kind of over the top. Listen, it, it isn't, isn't it odd that the Bible continually returns back to us taking what we received and passing it on to others? It constantly, the Bible constantly deals with that. You're like, preacher, you, I talk about that a lot. Like, you've been here all this time, and that's all you seem to talk about. Well, that's, I just keep finding it. I mean, wherever I go in the Bible, it keeps talking about the same thing. You're like, why don't you find some? I'd have to get a different book. There ain't no other one. You know, it's, just, it's, it's, it's like God's plan is the same. This whole thing of Christianity isn't really so complicated after all. Now, I'm not saying we know the mind of God. I'm just saying our part is so simple. He, he said this. He said, we should present ourselves as a living sacrifice. You know, not as the Old Testament sacrifice. Uh-uh. That was burned up and consumed upon the altar. Listen, God isn't, God isn't asking you to come forward today to the altar and listen, would you sacrifice your life right here? We've got a fire back here. And we want to burn you to the gods. Now we're not asking you to say, this is this some kind of Molech thing? No, no, listen. Uh, that's not what He's asking for us for. Matter of fact, He doesn't want you to, to end your life. A believer that wants to end their life is the most selfish unreasonable person on this planet. But God did for them, and they're saying, you know, I just can't deal with it anymore. Um, this, this, we're, we're not supposed to sacrifice ourselves like as Jesus did and gave His life as a sacrifice for us all. No, no, we're not, we're not to do that. We're to be a living, a living sacrifice one that continues on in this life with a purpose. <sighs> I made it through another day. <laughs> Bless God. That, isn't that a blessing? How you doing? <sighs> I made it. That, that's, folks, we have some bad days. I, I understand. We, we, there's some days I'm feeling that. You know what I mean? There's some days I'm feeling that. But that's not my life. By, by the way, sometimes we go through the day, and, and that, that is the way I feel, and somebody encourages me, and I'm glad they did. And, and, uh, but listen, that's not, that ought not be our life. We're just getting through life. Folks, we all have things. We all have burdens. We have sicknesses. We all have things that, that, that suffer, we deal with. But our life ought to be a living sacrifice, some, a life that's on purpose. A purpose... And that purpose is to continue to send God's plan forth so that others might know Him. Number five. So where do we start? Where do we start this thing? That's okay. Our reasonable service, okay? Where do we start that thing? Well, verse 2 tells us, in case you was wondering. He says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So there's only one thing that could even be considered reasonable service. Not being conformed to this world. I said, I'm going to tell you where, where, where this, this reasonable, what's reasonable for, for you to, to do with your life, what's reasonable to do, 
because of what God has already done in your life, how He's reached into your life and, and provided a way for mercy to come to you, what's reasonable is not to be conformed to this world, which, which means not to be fashioned or formed according to the way this world is. He said, listen, I, listen you know, one of the easiest things is to go with the flow. That's, that's really, I mean, when the current's coming down, you just flow with it. That's actually easy to get in and let it take me where it's going to go. But that's kind of what it does, doesn't it? It takes me. I don't know how many of y'all have ever been through Las Vegas. We were, we were in Las Vegas. We, we went to go visit a church there. Did a little gambling. No, we didn't. No, we went to, we went to uh, go visit a church there as, de- as missionaries. We went to go visit a church. Just a good church is in Vegas, believe it or not. In Sin City, right? And so we went there. And I'm telling you, driving through the streets... I'm trying to drive like this. Those billboards are, I'll tell you, it's, it's terrible. I'm thinking, I would, I mean, I, of course, I had all girls, and we still do. But um, they, um, and I thought, I couldn't imagine having boys trying to drive through here. Put your faces on the mat. You know what I mean? I mean, it was just, I thought, man, I would, whew, God would have to call me there badly, hard, a lot, a lot, to make me take a family there to, to reach other people. I'm saying, what a, what a challenge. You know, to be conformed to the world, it's easy. But being fashioned in the way that the, that the world is fashioning us, it's, it's really easy. It's just to go with the flow. Re- really, though, it's just this. Our reasonable service, it isn't just... It, it isn't to be just like we were before we met Jesus. It's really what this is talking about. It said, listen, not to continue to be conformed. He said, but there ought to be something different. We, we ought to get out of that mold. It said, listen, when, God's, when Jesus Christ saved me through His shed blood and, and forgiveness of sin, it changed me. You know what? I'm going to get out of that mold of the world. I'm not going to let them mold me. That's, listen, that's what we did when we were ignorant of what God was doing. You see, when we were ignorant, we didn't know, and, and this is what, this is what the, the, the chapter 11 says, I don't, this, so that you're not ignorant. So we're not, we're not stuck in that. When we were ignorant, we just followed along with it. It's not reasonable to continue doing that. Well, I got saved, now I'm going to be what I always was. That's, listen, folks, that's not what a lighthouse to the world looks like. You know, when I was a, before I got saved, I would shine the, 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 the light on, on the land, now that I got saved, I'm going to still do that. He said, no, I want you to shine it out to those that are lost. Something's different with this. It's not reasonable to continue there. The only, way, the only way to not be conformed to this world is to let the opposite take place. He said there in verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, and he gives it an opposite, an opposing thing, but... Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I, I said not to. I, I said this. The only way to not be conformed is to is to let the opposite happen. Here's the thing. It says to to let it happen. To to in this way it says. But be ye transformed. That word transformed is what we call. I'm gonna give you a little bit of English lesson this morning. It's what we call a passive verb. A passive verb is, is, is an action that happens to us. It's not an action that we do. There's an active verb that I do, but then there's a passive is, is an action that happens to me. Like when I'm sitting at the, the stoplight and I get rear-ended. I got rear-ended, but I didn't do it. It happened to me, right? Let's, let's hope that doesn't happen. And so, so this passive verb, so when I become a, a new creature, the Lord does a work to me to transform me. He's doing that. Listen, if, if it isn't taking place, if I'm not being transformed, I'm the one resisting it. God is already trying to do that thing. So, if this, if, so, so listen, He's transforming us into the one place, in that one place where everything in our life springs up out of our mind. He's transforming our thinking in the the, the transforming and the renewing of your mind. You know, we've got to get some new thinking. Over here, my life was about this guy. 
How do I get through this life? How do I make it through this life? How do I get the answers? How do I feel good? I, if I'm going to help people, I'm going to help people so I feel good about it. Right? If I'm going to do anything, I'm going to do it so, it, so, it, so this life is, is good. He said, God said, I want to transform and renew your mind. I want to give you some different thinking. It's going to be different. Um, if, if someone steals your coat, I want you to give them your cloak also. Well, that's dumb. So if they steal one thing, I give them other stuff? That, uh, he said this. He said, if they, if they whoosh, hit you on one side, let them give them the other. Come on. <laughs> like, it's weird, isn't it? He said, you know, you know what I want to do? I want you to, to realize this. Just doing something isn't the sin. Having a desire to do it is the sin. Wow, he gets into this thing. It's really kind of a, a strange thing. There's this whole renewal. We've got to get our mind changed. It's got to be transformed away from that. And, and it's, it's, it's going to feel different, <laughs> right? It's going to feel different. Life's going to feel different. Um, but, but it is a transformation after all, right? Um, but if we, will, uh, if we will let him, that's what I'm saying to you this morning, if we will let him, he will renew your thinking. Watch this now. We, now we get to the part of the active verb, the part we exercise. He says there, and, and be not conformed to the world, uh, to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is, we prove meaning we discern, we, we understand what it is. It's, we understand, we, we, we learn what is good. See, by the renewing of my mind, I learn what is good. I learn what is, what is acceptable. I learn what is perfect. Can I, can I tell you this, folks? I, I, don't, I don't get there by being conformed to the world. I, I've got to be transformed. My mind has to be transformed for God to be able to help me, for me to be able to prove what is good. You know, when folks come up and say, well, Pastor, I just think, I, I, I think this is what God wants me to do. I said, well, have you been attending church regularly? Well, no. Been praying? Well, I, not really. You know, I, I just feel like God hasn't been feeding me. I just haven't been fed here, so I'm going to do something different. Oh, okay. So, you've not really been <laughs> transformed, but you're going to try to figure out in that place what's good. Right? You're going to find out in that place what's acceptable with God. I, think, I really think this is what God wants me to do. Where, how do you know that? I just feel it. You ever said that? I've, I've, I've said that. I just feel like this is what God wants me to do. I feel it. You know in that heart, that part that is just a sweet, kind place of us? No, it actually says it's, it's deceptive. It's wicked. That's where I'm going to use as my source. Said, no, when we get transformed, here's what happens. We do stuff that sometimes goes beyond reason. That's illogical. Why would you do that? Why would you give 10% of your income? That's weird. Why do you, you know, when I got saved and they said we give 10%, I'm like, so okay, we give. And, and, they, and I'd heard, pre, pre, well, if you give 10%, God will make the 90% stretch further than the 100%. Right? You ever heard that? It's true. I don't know how it works. It's illogical. How does God take, not take, but how does God say, I want you to give me part of your income, and then I'm going to make what you have left over uh, be, be last longer than what you had to start with? That's illogical. It doesn't make good business sense. It doesn't work on the ledger. I was in Bible college, and we were putting together, a, we did a financial class. And I'm doing these numbers, and they said, you know, give us your budget, and we put all these things down. I'm in Bible college, right, with the family. I have four kids at that time in Bible college and trying to work a job, and oh, man, I'm telling you. So I put all this stuff down, and, and every time I put it all down, this is what I spent. I actually got my actual bills when it came down to the bottom. It was in red, like negative. And, and I, I would show, we had to show, present, and the, and the, the, the teacher said, well, you know, you've got to, he said, now you're in Bible college, you should probably do, you know, do less of this giving and not, not give as much to missions. And you go, you know, it's different now. And I said, I said, brother, I, I understand what you're saying. I said, but here's what I'm doing. It's showing in red, but I've got money. I don't know how that works. It's unreasonable. It's illogical. Sometimes God's going to ask you to do something that doesn't make sense. It's weird. Feels, but you know, 
That's what transforming your mind is about. It's, it's almost like we want everything that God does to be physical. We want it to be natural. But God said, I'm going to do stuff supernatural in your life if you'll let me. You say, I know this is going to be a message on tithing. Well, um, it's all part of the perfect will of God. When we get transformed, God does a lot of things. I'm telling you, there's no better place for the Christian than to dwell in the perfect will of God. That's what he talks about. That's when we know the perfect will of God. It's, it's living like he wants me to, to the very best of my understanding. I didn't say to the best of my ability. My ability is pretty lame. But to the best of my understanding, I'm going to try to... I'm telling you, I'm not sure what floating on a cloud is like. I've sat in a lazy boy recliner that almost felt like it. But I'm telling you what, I'm not sure, but that's what it's like living in the perfect will of God. It's just, it's just sweet. It's, you know, the world can be falling around, falling apart around you, and you're there, and it's, it's like, you know, why are you, are sick unto death? Why are you happy? I don't know. I don't know. Why, you know, you're, you're broke, you lost your job, this thing. By the way, that's not what Christian life is about, everything miserable. But I'm just saying, sometimes those pl- things do happen, and somehow there's, being in the perfect will of God, it's just a sweet place. So, here's the conclusion this morning. Here's the challenge for us. Let God do what He's trying to do in you. Let God do what he's trying to do. And folks, listen, I, there, if there's anything that I could teach you as a pastor, I'd get a hold. Is God's trying to do something in your life. Let him do it. Don't resist it. I, I know it's a little painful sometimes. But, but just, just, just stop resisting it. Say, God, I'm going to let you, let you do it. By, by the way, it, it, comes, it doesn't come from here. It comes from here. Amen? Amen? This thing will take us down some dirty roads. It gets in a lot of trouble that, that we, we wake up with shame and regret. This won't. And when we go in this thing, it's going to take us some places. Stop resisting. Let Him transform your thinking. You say, well, no, I've never thought like that. Good. If it comes from here. Good. It's, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. You, you'll never regret that. You never regret what God's doing. Listen, here. It's only reasonable. It's only reasonable. Don't you think it's time to be reasonable? Let's all stand together. Father, I pray that you would help us this morning. And Lord, as we we recognize what that therefore is therefore, we, we realize that, Lord, you have from the From the beginning, you have had a plan to get your mercy to us. So much, so many lives have been involved in that. Generations and generations. Thousands of years of folks in which you've been working to get that gospel to each one of us today. Through our life. Yet, Lord, because of that, we... We should see that it's just only reasonable for us to continue that on. Lord, help us to be what you want us to be, Lord, that we might be used in your ever-flowing process, your plan of getting the gospel to our world. Lord, I pray this morning you'd help us by really letting you transform our thinking, our mind, According to your word, Lord, I pray that you'd have your will and way this time of invitation. Lord, would you speak to hearts? Oh, thank you.